Most of Europe has recently been experiencing exceptionally warm weather in the middle of winter, but Ireland has been on the edge of that extreme weather event, with fairly typical temperatures for this time of year. But a few weeks ago, in the middle of December, we had unusually cold weather, with temperatures well below normal for an extended period of time. It was the longest period of freezing weather, with the coldest temperatures we have experienced for 12 years. So quite unusual for this normally temperate maritime climate, and conditions I have not experienced as a grower. Coming from Canada, I am very used to cold winters, but this is the first time that I have had lots of vegetables growing in the gardens when temperatures went that low, and for such a long period of time. And it was really interesting to see how some vegetable plants didn't seem to be affected by this deep freeze at all, whereas others really suffered and we ended up losing a few crops. The climate of Ireland is very influenced by the Gulf Stream, with most of the wind and weather coming in from the southwest over the relatively warm waters of the North Atlantic. This means that the average low temperatures we experience tends to keep a few degrees above freezing throughout the winter. In the Midlands of Ireland, where the gardens are located, we occasionally get frosts, and we can get a few nights each winter where the temperatures drop to 4 or 6 degrees below freezing. But we rarely have daytime temperatures that are below freezing, and the cold spells generally don't last very long, so the ground doesn't freeze very deep or stay frozen. That is what made the deep freeze we had in December so unusual, as we had 10 nights in a row with temperatures well below freezing, with one night getting as low as minus 8 degrees Celsius. And there were 5 days in the middle of that cold period where the temperature stayed below freezing throughout the full day. The freezing conditions we get generally occur when the weather comes from the northeast rather than the southwest, bringing the cold air down from the Arctic and reducing the influence of the warmer waters of the Atlantic. The last time we had a deep freeze like this was 12 years ago, when the freezing conditions lasted 9 days, with temperatures dropping below minus 10 degrees Celsius for 6 nights in a row, and getting as low as minus 14 degrees Celsius on one night. So the cold period that we had a few weeks ago wasn't record breaking, but it was colder than anything I had experienced in the gardens before. I expected that a lot of the vegetable plants in the gardens would be fine with this deep freeze. The leaves of the leek plants were covered with ice crystals or hoar frost, and looked a bit wilted after really cold night temperatures. But a few days later they were fine and growing again, which is what I would have expected as leek plants are well known for being hardy. The leaves of the kale plants also didn't seem to be affected by the frost, though I'm not sure what would have happened if I had picked some of the leaves frozen, rather than waiting for them to thaw still attached to the plant while harvesting. I have heard that some leafy vegetables will wilt if they are picked frozen, and I wish I had tested this. The leaves of the purple sprouting broccoli plants had drooped a bit when frozen, but they returned to normal after they thawed. The Brussels sprouts plants didn't seem to be affected, and these plants are also known to be very tolerant of cold conditions. The buds were frozen solid inside, but after thawing on the plants, the sprouts returned to the usual crisp texture, but I'm not sure what would have happened if I had harvested some of them frozen. The mature winter cabbage plants had lots of ice crystals on them, and I was wondering how well they would handle the cold conditions, but they returned to normal once the weather warmed up. And the parsnips seemed unaffected, even with the ground frozen solid around them. I had expected all these plants to handle the cold conditions really well, and it was nice to see this confirmed. The broccoli or calabrese plants were not so successful in this cold. We had planted them late, and they hadn't grown very big in the autumn, and were only just producing small heads when the cold conditions arrived. The leaves of these plants were fine, but I wasn't sure if the immature flower bud that we normally eat was going to make it. They seemed to be okay once everything thawed, but a few weeks later the top surface of the developing edible head had turned to mush. I guess it makes sense that the exposed surface of these immature flower buds would not be as tolerant of the freezing weather conditions as the rest of the plant. The inner parts of the broccoli seemed fine, but I'm not sure if they will continue to grow, and if they would be worth trying to salvage. I don't have any experience of growing these calabrese broccoli, or the closely related cauliflower into the winter, but perhaps some varieties would do better than others. I expected the swede, or rutabaga, or Irish turnip roots to manage the freezing conditions well, and they seemed firm enough right after the freezing conditions finished. A few weeks later the plants were still growing, and when I cut open one, the inside of the root seemed fine, but I think it would have been better to have harvested them all and put them into the cellar before the really cold conditions began. 
We also grew a giant variety of kohlrabi that has been bred to grow really big for winter storage. And I was concerned about these plants as they didn't look great in the freezing conditions and cutting one open after it had thawed there was obvious frost damage. A few weeks later the plants looked in really rough shape and I cut another one open and it was definitely starting to decay. They probably would have survived a lighter frost, but unlike the large roots of the swede or rutabaga, these plants store the energy in a swollen part of the stem, and I guess this part of the plant can be damaged with these lower temperatures. They definitely should have been harvested before the cold conditions arrived, and this was one of the big crop losses that we had with this deep freeze. The charred plants also looked quite badly affected during the really cold weather, and when the leaves thawed, it was obvious that they had been seriously damaged. A few weeks later, many of the larger leaves of the plants were decaying and most of the rest were damaged. But the smaller leaves within the inner part of the plants were regrowing and it will be interesting to see if they produce more as the weather warms up. But the larger leaves that would have been harvested and eaten were lost as a crop, which is an unexpected setback, as I would have thought that these plants would have been able to handle the cold better. Interestingly, the charred plants in the polytunnel did a lot better and seemed to have no problems with the cold conditions. The overnight low temperatures inside the polytunnel would have been quite similar to the temperatures outside, but they definitely would have warmed up again each day under cover. So perhaps they can survive freezing conditions for a short period, but will eventually suffer if the temperatures remain that low for too long. A trial of a late sowing of young beetroot plants that were out in the open were also badly affected by the cold, which makes sense as they are close relatives of the charred plants. But the young plants that were under the protection of the crop cover seem to do a bit better, but I don't expect much from this late crop as they will likely bolt in the spring rather than producing an edible beetroot. We also had a range of other types of salad crops, both out in the open and under crop covers and inside the polytunnels. The more developed lettuce plants under the crop covers suffered some damage to the older leaves and the plants from one type completely turned to mush, but a few weeks later most of the other plants were growing again. Smaller lettuce seedlings within the cold frame and in one of the polytunnels didn't have any signs of damage and it seems there was a definite benefit from the extra protection of the plastic and the chance to warm up during the day. The spinach plants under the crop covers had a little bit of superficial damage to the leaves from the freezing, but the seedlings in the polytunnel were unaffected, and the plants covered only with a light netting outside didn't have any signs of leaf damage a few weeks later, so it seems that at least this variety of spinach is quite tolerant to extended periods of freezing conditions. The young pak choy plants seemed a little bit less resilient to the cold, with a few of the large leaves dying on the plants that were exposed, but the plants will probably continue to grow, and the pak choy plants under the cover did better. The young mustard plants and other spicy greens under cover seemed fine as expected, but some of the older rocket or arugula leaves that were exposed definitely suffered. I was pleasantly surprised that the young carrot plants seemed to be unaffected, even though the soil would have frozen around them but I was not sure if they will continue to grow after such a long cold period. And the young overwintering cabbage plants under the crop covers didn't have any damage, but a few exposed plants in another garden had the outer leaves badly damaged, but the plants will probably continue to grow. Surviving the cold conditions out in the open really depends on the type of plant and possibly the variety that we are growing and the age of the plant. And protecting the crop with a crop cover definitely seemed to help especially when it was covered with a thick layer of frost. But the plastic in the polytunnel or cold frame seemed to offer the best protection. So some plants managed the deep freeze quite well and others really struggled depending on how much protection we had given them. Part of this is likely because of how resistant the cells and the leaves are to freezing. And I suspect the main damage was because the air temperature got below the levels that the cells could survive. But I am interested in the significant difference in the charred leaves in the open and under the plastic, and I suspect that extra protection from the wind would have helped. I also wonder if some of the damage was due to the roots of the plant freezing, as only the surface of the soil would have frozen in the polytunnels and under the cold frame, and would have thawed during the day. But the soil remained frozen in the outside gardens, and would have continued to freeze to a deeper and deeper level over a 10 day long cold period and perhaps the large and thick root systems of the charred plants can't handle being in frozen soil, but the more fibrous roots of the kales and other brassica family plants can handle being frozen. 
I dug into one of the outside gardens to see how deep the frozen layer got after about eight days of freezing conditions. And it seems that the soil had frozen solid to a depth of about eight to 10 centimeters or three to four inches. And the soil below that was cold, but hadn't frozen. I wonder what impact this would have on the biology of this top layer of soil, including the worms and other soil-based organisms, as well as the slugs, insects, and other creatures that would have burrowed into the soil to overwinter. Some of the organisms would have gone deeper into the warmer soil below, and others would have been able to withstand the freezing conditions, but no doubt a lot of the other organisms died. It will be really interesting to see if we notice any difference in the spring, after an unusually long and deep freeze like this. Although it was nothing compared to the cold that the soils of the landscape I grew up with in Canada would go through every year, the biology here in Ireland, both above ground and below ground, is not acclimatized to these conditions. It might take longer for the populations of decomposing organisms to bounce back once the soil warms up again in the spring, and I suspect that some of the plants in the surrounding landscape will not survive. And I wonder if the population of slugs and snails will have been significantly reduced, as these are some of the main pests in the gardens around here. But if the slugs were affected, then no doubt other beneficial creatures would have suffered as well. And with the complex interactions of the web of biodiversity, there will be some benefits to the gardens and also some setbacks, a lot of which might last for a while. It was really useful to see how all the different crops handled the freezing conditions like that, and how the protection of plastic or even a crop cover seemed to make a significant difference. And this had an impact on what we will be able to eat out of the gardens for the rest of the winter and into the spring, to supplement the abundance that we have stored from the warmer parts of the growing season. I do wonder if unusual cold periods like this will occur more frequently in the future, as part of the more extreme weather conditions that we expect as the climate changes. But it was good to experience how a lot of the crops that we would typically grow over the winter were able to handle a deep freeze like that, or not, so that we would be better prepared if it was to happen again.